Hello comrades the topic for our discussion today is the sources of ancient indian history part 1 and in this section we'll be discussing only about the material sources that would be archaeological sources and the coins in the next part the remaining sources would be discussed the focus of our discussion would primarily be if, uh, primarily be the introduction of the section as well as the discussion on the archaeological sources and the numismatics which is the study of the coins now in the introduction we can think and we can imagine as we know that india proved to be the crucible of numerous races and cultures since the ancient times the history of ancient india acts as a canvas which reflects the primary hues of the diversity in the indian scenario notably although diversity was explicit which means that was easily reflected which was easily which could easily be seen through various means and ways the ancients strove for unity which is well reflected in the term bharatvarsh used for india now in the overview if you reflect there are several instances which can be traced during the course of ancient indian history which holds testimony which is a witness or which is a proof to the linguistic and cultural identity sought by the people firstly during the 3rd century bc prakrit was probably the lingua franca of india as ashokan inscriptions depicts the same although other languages were used in the northwestern part uh, by ashok but primarily prakrit was a language which was used throughout the empire secondly during the 4th century ad in the gupta times and even after them sanskrit emerged as a prominent and widely used language thirdly we can find a number of translations of ramayana and mahabharata which with each uh, version being linguistically different but keeping the core idea united and in fact the genesis of the term india from greek or uh, if we see the word hind that comes from persian or sindh which is derived from sanskrit all these emanate that unity of ideas was taking diverse forms further the entire corpus of ancient india can be built upon the premise of sources and as i've already told today we shall be discussing the archaeological sources which entails the material remains as well as the coins coming to the archaeological sources excavations have remained the chief method of revealing what the past holds for us and in this regard vertical excavations have been very common and more common than horizontal ones because of horizontal excavations are very expensive if you see in the horizontal excavations if you remove the slides of land and a huge portion of land is being unearthed so it takes a lot of uh, amount also and lot of agricultural land or the useful land goes into that which is not probably suited in the archaeological circles and so horizontal uh, excavations though they are very useful they have not been as frequent as the vertical excavations uh, further besides this temperature and climate of the place also plays a very crucial role as if you see places which have moist climatic conditions cause erosion of the material remains which does not happen if you see in the places which have drier conditions uh, which means that the material remains survive for long if the climatic conditions are favorable to it in the light of the same if you look at uh, the various means through which such sources can be analyzed and uh, revisited or history can be reconstructed through it these sources or material remains would include tools animal remains from houses bricks uh, also uh, bones of animals uh, pieces of grains all these things reveal path breaking information about the lifestyle of the people some methods used in this regard are carbon dating and pollen analysis which have been variously used by historians and scholars and archaeologists to date the various material remains that have been unearthed or that have been excavated and also to analyze the usefulness of these materials in the lifestyle of our ancestors so to say next moving on to coins the study of coins first of all is called numismatics these reveal information on a large number of aspects for example if you want political information from coins the names of the kings reveal information on the political history and uh, in this regard if you see the history of the 
Indo Greeks coming into India in the third and the second century BC is based entirely on the names of the kings that were given on the on the coins. Secondly, if you seek cultural information through the coins, then the religious symbols or such uh, pieces of art on the coins reveal a lot about the culture of the people who might have uh, made those coins. A lot of information about the economy can also be gained through the coins. For example, if there are large number of coins which have been honored from a particular site, this reveals that trade and commerce might have uh, flourished during those areas. And if you want to take an example, uh, we can see that in the Gupta times, there were large number of coins which also revealed that trade flourished. But in the post Gupta times, such number of coins uh, in those days, such number of coins reduced, which was possibly an indication that there was a decline in the trade and commerce during the post Gupta period. Now, uh, coins were made up of several material, copper, silver, gold, lead. These were the various materials through which uh, coins were manufactured and it also depended upon the uh, empire which we uh, which we are studying and an analysis into the same although may not be giving very much uh, path breaking information but it uh, although they may not reflect any path breaking information but definitely it reflected the preference of the king also it was dependent upon the availability of the material in the empire and such factors entailing the same now this was the discussion which was based on the material remains of ancient Indian history and all the relevant information although scores of information are available but we need such relevant information which can be reproduced in any answer which is written on the topic and through this video we have tried to gauge only those relevant informations from the entire corpus of ancient Indian history sources hope this video was helpful to you let us end our discussion with a positive quote by apj abdul kalam you see god helps only people who work hard that principle is very clear thank you